Hi, Bernina Jeff here from High Fashion Sewing Machines in Grand Junction, Colorado. Today we're going to go into uh, something besides Bernina's, and that's any machine that has a drop-in bobbin case. That's one where you can kind of see down and the bobbin just drops in. It's also called a horizontal bobbin case as compared to Bernina's that have vertical bobbin cases. The horizontals are very popular in your baby locks, in your brother machines, in Janome machines, singers. Uh, they're just an easy and a very efficient uh, bobbin system. So I'm going to show you the tricks and traps that I've seen from customers. Most of the time the customers come in and they've gotten their bobbin case out of place. The needle, the needle has actually penetrated it and made holes. I'm going to show you a way you can repair that until you get a new uh, bobbin case or bobbin holder or bobbin basket. That's kind of the three main terms of what this little black part's called. So here we go. We're going to work on a baby lock machine today. And first we're going to show you how to take just part of the needle plate off and it just snaps on. Um, these are exactly the same on brother machines. Brothers and baby locks are almost identical except for the name and some of the features. So we're going to put a fingernail here and a fingernail here, pull towards you and it will just snap off. So this is needle plate part A. That's what they call it. So with that part off, you can pretty much do everything you need. You rarely need to take these two screws out, but I'm going to show you some tricks on that too. So at this point, I take the bobbin out. Now I reach in there and I pull out this black uh, bobbin basket, bobbin holder, bobbin case, however you want to call it. And then I'll inspect it. And right along the top here, if it's been put in wrong, there'll be little needle penetrations. This bobbin case is in perfect condition. I run my finger, thumb around here to make sure there's no burrs or little sharp spots because when the machine makes a stitch, the top thread runs all the way across here and back up over this little knob down here on the bottom. If there is a needle penetration, this is a wonderful tool. It's just a emery board, one of those green and white emery boards, and I will file off carefully any penetration on this side Try to get in here, get any penetration on that side. Anything that has a snag or any place of thread can uh, snag on because that will cause big long loops underneath your project. Then while it's out, I'll take a brush and I'll brush out any of this lint. The lint is something that is never good in a machine, so you want to do this on a regular basis. And then I make sure that my needle is all the way up. And if you look here, there's a little pointy thing on the hook. That is the hook, of, rotating hook of your machine that makes a stitch. So rotate that to where it's directly underneath the needle. And that's a good starting position to put your basket back in. So we're gonna put the bobbin basket back in and it goes in with this shape first. So hold it at about a 30 degree angle, slide it in there. And you have to wiggle and fiddle till it fits in there perfect. It should wiggle a minimum of one eighth of an inch. If it doesn't wiggle an eighth of an inch, because the thread has to pass between that spot right there, that little bump and that little springy piece of metal. If there's no room there, the thread won't pass and it will all accumulate down there. You'll have a whole bunch of uh, rings of thread there and it won't sew. If, and then on a lot of machines, they have these two little indicators. There's a circle on the metal part and a little triangle on the bobbin basket. Those need to be exactly lined up. And when they're exactly lined up, it'll be, it'll, you can put it back together and it'll sew. Make sure when you're putting it back together, you don't knock it out of place when you put this in. So I always make sure it's touching that little springy piece of metal and carefully put this back on. Now I'm going to show how every so often you need to clean between the, the feed dog slots underneath there. So I'm just going to take the foot off. Now here's one of my little special tools. It is a round disc with a little driver in there. So I can see through the disc and I can hold down and I can take that screw out very quickly. I sell these things here. You can order them from me for $10 each, which includes shipping too. So that screw's ready to take out. Now, if you don't have one of these, they give you a tool. If you don't have the tool, you can use a nickel. 
nickel fits in there perfectly. Or I also sell these little stubby tools. If you have a Janome, the slot in the screw is too narrow for a nickel to fit or my new or my little tool so I sell these stubby tools you get a straight blade and a um, Phillips for about four or five dollars shipping would be added on to that I don't know what the shipping would be so now I get them loose enough try never to drop these inside your machine ever ever try if you do put those off of the side don't drop them in carpeting in the trash can. So this this is your needle plate part B. A lot of other machines, the whole needle plate is one piece. The uh, brother and baby lock have two pieces, so it's easy so you don't have to use the screwdriver all the time. What I was talking about is these slots right here in the feed dogs. They'll accumulate with so much lint, it looks like a foam pad or a felt pad. So you want to make sure that lint is out of there. And those are nice and clean. I just make sure everything is good. If there's threads caught in your thread cutter and stuff, carefully take a tweezers and pull them out real gently. You want that free of lint and threads before we reassemble. So reassembling, it's kind of in a reverse order. Some of these kind of have springs on them. They actually have a sensor that tell the machine if that plate is on or not. I want to make sure it's lined up right and not put it on crooked. Get those screws started. And a lot of times you hold down the spring part and, and, and get those screws in the rest of the way. Nothing you can do about the hands here. I need to make these machines about an inch taller for my hands to fit underneath. This is when this tool really comes in handy. All you do is you just, you can see through the tool, you can get the little driver in the slot, and then hold on the middle with a finger and just twist the outside edge. You don't want to white knuckle those, but they need to be tight. You never want that plate to get loose and start wiggling around because you'll be sewing a zigzag and the plate's loose and your needle will hit it. So I'm making sure that this has a wiggle to it, that my tube spots are lined up, I'm pushing the little knobber next to the spring there. This goes in just a little short of that plate and pushes in. And now I will open this up. I'll actually go down there and confirm that it's wiggly, so it wiggles. And now I'll put my bobbin in. When you put your bobbin in, the thread has to come off the bottom and to the right. However you want to remember that. There's also sometimes an icon that shows you. If you put it in the wrong way, it will unthread itself underneath there and have no bobbin tension. Slide that mm -hmm. in there. I usually use my finger to put a little pressure on that. When I get it up to there, I, I give it a spin to make sure that the bobbin is in its tension springs. And now we're ready to go there. The other problem I see a lot of customers have is they have the incorrect bobbin for their machine. Uh, Every machine is bobbin specific. You can't just go buy a pack of bobbins and stick it in your machine. And if you don't know which bobbins fit in your machine, I use uh, two different search engines to make sure. Customers will come in with the model number. I'll type it in on, actually I use eBay for search. I'll type in the model number bobbins and sure enough somebody on eBay is selling bobbins that fit that machine. And there's another one called sewingmachinepartsonline.com. That's their only business is to sell sewing machine parts. So you type in a model number and you'll get any parts that are available for that machine. So I was telling you about needle strikes on that bobbin basket. Sometimes they're so bad you can't fix them or they're chipped away. You can buy a bobbin basket on sewingmachinepartsonline.com. They ship right to you. They're a very reputable company. Or you can go to your dealer, whichever works. So. Hopefully this will keep you sewing. Remember to subscribe to Bernina Jeff on YouTube and please pass this on for anybody that has a drop-in type bobbin. This will really help them sew. Thanks.